So what do you need to get done today? Oh, well, I need to cook dinner, uh, clean the house, fold all the laundry, and oh, oh yeah, mow the lawn. Oh, that'll be no problem. You have the whole day. Yeah, you're right, no problem. But wait a minute, I have, I have kids. <laughs> Do you feel overwhelmed by all the things you need to get done? Well, you're not alone. So do I. Some of you have been asking me, how do I do it all? How do I keep up with cleaning the house, putting dinner on the table, managing a YouTube channel, and being pregnant all while chasing around a toddler? It's not easy, and sometimes I have mini breakdowns. So what's for dinner? <laughs> what's for dinner? What's for dinner? <laughs> what's for dinner? But when I'm not in the middle of a breakdown, I've established a schedule that makes it possible for me to have the time to do almost everything I need to do. So let's jump into the first thing I do to make time for myself. I wake up earlier than my son. You've heard it a hundred times, I know. But once you finally decide to do it, it will change your life. There are only two times of the day that you can enjoy complete silence, the early morning and the late night. Why miss out on one of them? But you may ask, Ariel, what if my kids wake up at 5 a.m.? Well then, we're gonna need to fix that because the only thing that should be functioning that early in the morning is the sound of my husband snoring. So I bought this stoplight. It was around $35 on Amazon and it simply tells your kids when they can leave the rooms. Red means stay in bed and green means you're free to get up and go. So since my son goes to bed later at night at 8.30, then I set his wake up time to 8.30 in the morning. Sometimes he wakes up at eight, but he knows if the light's not green, then he's just gonna hang out in bed until it is. If you wanna spend a little more money on something prettier and fancier, then check out the Hatch Rest Nightlight. I don't have one personally, but I really want one. You can get them for around $70, and they're cool because you can control all of its settings right from your smartphone without even entering your child's room. I'll link both items in the description if you'd like to check them out. But hey, you don't have a lot of money to spend? Well, this stoplight works just fine. It has for me for the last two years. The next way I manage to get things done with a three-year-old is I let him play with unconventional things. Are you cooking in the kitchen? Well then give your kids all of the plastic spice bottles so they can make a tower. Or hand them measuring cups and let them match them up. I'll let my son play with almost anything and everything so that I can get household chores done. Okay, well, maybe not everything, but half the time they're bored of their toys, so something like kitchen utensils can be pretty exciting simply because it's something new. In the world of a toddler, everything can be thought of as a toy. Rocket ship. Three, two, one, blast off. A kazoo. <laughs> Jail. Help me, get me out of here. Playground. You get the point. The third trick I've used in the past to free up my time as a mom is to swap babysitting. You don't have to pay for it, you just need to find some other desperate mom out there just like you who is willing to trade. And trust me, there's a lot of us out there who are very, very desperate. So what could that look like? Well, maybe you watch your cousin Kathy's kids on Tuesday, and then she watches your kids on Thursday. Therefore, you both get a day to yourself, which many moms would give a kidney for. So if you have friends in your life with children the same age, then don't be afraid to ask. They may just need it more than you. The next approach I'm gonna talk about is where I get the most done in a day, but it's the hardest to introduce. Each day I set up a quiet playtime for my son. This is a time where he has to stay in his bedroom for a set amount of time and play with his toys quietly. So in our house, every day from 2 until 3.30, I set his stoplight timer, and this is the time I have to edit my videos, clean the house, or practice my mad dancing skills. We've been doing it for over a year now and I couldn't be more grateful that I started this. Although it's not gonna be easy at first, it's gonna take some getting used to, but you just gotta start slow. The first time you try this with your kid, set a visual timer for maybe 10 to 15 minutes and give them some special toys that they can only play with during that time. Then you'll wanna be clear with them that this is a time to play quietly and they are to stay in their room, but when the timer is up, they can come out. And then over the next few weeks of doing it every day, you can slowly increase the time. When I started doing this, I was actually transitioning from a daily nap time to quiet play time. So at that point, I was giving him a choice, telling him, well, you can either sleep, or you can play quietly. To which of course he always chose to play, but he did better with the Switch because he was just excited that he didn't have to nap anymore. 
I also treat quiet playtime much like I used to treat nap time where I read him two books beforehand and then he goes on the potty just to give him that familiarity with what we're doing. If you can get your child in a daily quiet playtime, then you'll be thanking yourself over and over again. Honestly, I don't even know how I would keep up with everything if it wasn't for this time. And this doesn't just benefit you, but it's also really good for your kids too. Independent play helps children to develop confidence and imagination. It also improves their problem solving solving skills and teaches them patience. The next way I get things done as a busy mom is I try to only buy toys that encourage independent play. If you buy train tracks that are difficult to put together, then your child is going to constantly be asking you to help them. But if you bought these kinds of wooden tracks instead, then they should more easily be able to put them together themselves. The best toy options for independent play are blocks, Legos, sand or water tables, Play-Doh, these are the toys that are going to help keep their minds moving and hopefully distract them enough so that you can keep moving too. Or so that you can stop moving. Or so that you can move it, move it. The sixth way I get things done is by involving my son when I cook dinner. Dinner is no 15 minute walk in the park. Half the time I'm spending an hour cooking dinner and that's an hour that I can't afford to have a toddler pulling at my leg. So I ended up buying this knife set that is kid friendly and now my son can help cook dinner. This has been game changing. How the heck do they make toy knives that cut through apples yet don't cut your fingers? I have no idea, but if anyone has a child like mine who doesn't really like to help you cook, this may just change their minds. Totally worth investing in and this whole set cost only around $20 on Amazon. The next way I find time to get things done is by not multitasking when it comes to time spent with my son. Your kids need your attention and love and they need it every day. It may seem silly, but I schedule it and sometimes I'll even use a timer. So if I decide I'm gonna spend quality time with my son from 10 until 11.30, then I'll put my phone down so that I can give him my full attention. But when 11.30 comes, I make it clear that I need to get chores done. I find that if I give him that attention first, then he does much better with playing independently after so that I can focus on the tasks I need to complete. And also, for those times that I do have when my mom or husband watches our son, then I don't waste any time. I spend every precious moment working because I know this time is limited and I don't want to lose out on it. I also try not to focus so much on how many hours I spent working, but rather focus on, well, what did I accomplish today? Yeah, I only worked for two hours and it wasn't much time, but maybe I should celebrate the fact that in those two hours, I managed to wash all the dishes, make those four important phone calls I needed to make and clean the kitchen. And maybe that's a victory because life as a mom is busy and crazy and we need to give ourselves grace. The next way I find time for myself is by putting my son to bed before he gets tired. Yes, this does require you to sleep train and it may not be for everyone, but I spent the first two years of his life lying with him for very long periods of time, waiting for him to fall asleep. And finally, I just said, enough is enough. I need my own downtime and I need time to spend with my husband. So I made this routine board and I set up a bedtime schedule to follow. Now the lights go out at 8.30 and he has to be in bed. I do allow him to have a few books and toys in his bed that he can play with until he falls asleep, but he's gotta stay in his bed. And this way, I get to keep my sanity. And while you're here, are you looking for ways to manage your time better as a mom? Well, don't be shy. Click right here to learn about 10 ways that may just help you. And I'll see you there.